everyone, I'm Holly with Missouri River Soap and I'm here to make one of our favorite holiday Christmas soaps and that is Wild Berry Blizzard. And the first thing I want to do is add in my coconut milk. I like to just go ahead and get it all well blended in. I haven't found that there's any issue putting it in straight to the oils as opposed to at trace or what have you. And now for the lye solution. It has a little lye lint in it, but it's pretty fresh, so I'm going to let it go in. fragrance does discolor a little bit so I am going to pull some of this um, batter out to leave unscented. I'm at just a very very light trace kind of past emulsification just getting at a trace this is not usually a real thick white part so I'm not going to do a whole lot there. And so I have reduced the fragrance just a smidgen to accommodate that white. It all goes to the same place. I know a lot of people will still use the full amount because you know as a soap using it together it's all dispersed but it can also cause the remaining um, batter to accelerate too much and I just don't want that. So in with my fragrance and let me tell you what it smells so good oh my goodness this is a mix of five different berry scents and I just love them all. We have some winter candy apple, some snow fairy, um, some of my snowberry, and some cranberries in there. And oh my goodness, it's just so good. I am going to stick blend the colors so I don't need this to be too far along. Oh my goodness. It's one of those scents that when I start mixing it, it's like, hmm, you know, you're not really that special. And then by the time it sets and has time to blend, oh my goodness, it's so good. It just needs that time for all the different notes to meld together. Okay. Trying to see. I think that's good. They're not even, but that's okay. So, into this one. Everybody move over. Make room. I need to kind of get some of this cleaned off. I wanted to just put it all into pitchers, but I did not have enough pitchers that were clean and ready to go. I've been doing a lot of soap making around here getting ready for the holidays. The color combo on these, this uh, soap is purple and pink and blue and then the white. Mm, that's so pretty. All right, that one's looking pretty good. It does have a little bit of pigment in there so we're gonna see. I do want to stick blend it, but we gotta get these others done first. I do need to get my white going there before we do all this too. Okay, so we've got some bright pink going and some lovely blue. 
This one is going to discolor just a little bit. So I want to get the colors fairly punchy. They're still within usage rates. But I want them to be the best they can be. Alright, I need to stir that some more, but I want to go ahead and get in the white, just so I can get that stick blended, and then move on to the other colors. Alright, that looks nice. I think we better call that good. The good part about it being a little bit thick is that's going to help keep the color separated. Alright, let's just get this in there. Probably in a couple of different rounds. I watched back some of my um, older making of this and it was a little bit thinner than this and so gosh I hope it's still going to be awesome. I changed out one of my scents this year and because I just wasn't really that pleased with it before. Um, the Winter Candy Apple, I switched over to Indigo. It smells so much better than Nature's Garden one, but um, it is contributing to this acceleration that's a bit of an issue. Oops, just sending it everywhere. I feel like I've just been the messiest sofa recently. Kind of driving me a little bit bonkers. Let's put in just a little bit of the white. Kind of it's gonna break it up. Isn't that cool? It's a different consistency there. Okay. Let's get the rest of this in. Looks like we're going to be kind of ploppity here. That's all right. It's still workable, just doesn't really want to pour very much. This is where my hands get really tired and I just kind of wish I would have been able to pour it. This reminds me a lot of my patchouli rain soap and so I think maybe I will give it a little stir like I do with that one. Okay, so I think I'm going to do that. So the key is just we kind of just need to move it around a little bit. It's so pretty. The colors are all complementary, so 
they can blend together a little bit if needed and that um, loose white is kind of helping it to move around. It's really thick. So it's coming in here and grabbing some of that color and moving it around. It's not horrible. it a little clean up here and then we'll finish the soap oh it's so pretty it works it just works I just want a thin layer on the top, so I'm just going to kind of drizzle it, let it spread out here. It's not super pourable. I just find that it's best just to just kind of drizzle it around. All right, so it's pretty even. I'm just gonna kind of bring some of that under soap around. It's still gonna be mostly the white, but it'll kind of have a little bit of texture from that soap underneath. Instead of it just having a flat top, we'll let it, it's kind of, it's so thick underneath and then the top is just kind of flooding around so it kind of adds a super cool texture. I'm pretty excited about it actually. I like it. I like it a lot. I have a lot of white just like topped soap already, so I kind of wanted to do something different. Some of this is getting a, a little bit wild, I guess. It's kind of thickening up as I'm working around it. And if I make these too tall, I'll get in trouble with my husband who is the boxing crew around here and he'll have to plane off the bottom to make them fit so I get in trouble <laughs> so I get in trouble for that sometimes so I think I may just smack it down just a little all right I think I would call that good for there but wait there's more so I have been doing this whole colored sugar thing quite a bit. The difference is, is that this is how I actually do this particular soap. So we're gonna keep on with it. This is just a little bit of sanding sugar. I think I used salt last year, but I have some sanding sugar that I'm enjoying. And this is just mixed with a little bit of, here comes the bride mica. It's not super noticeable probably to you on camera, but it's it's prettier in person. It's a little bit messy still. All right, let's do the pink. Oh my goodness. I just love it when that pink shows up. Just like, hello, I've come to party. But then it's going to be like that with the other colors too. So 
yeah. Oh, it smells so good. This soap is just amazing. It's so good. And then the blue is really gonna pop too. Yes, hello. I have not made this one in a long time, but I do tend to continue to make this one in the winter time. I really should make it all year round because it is that good. And next time I make it, now that I know what I know about that newer fragrance, how it's affecting the blend, there's like hardly any pink right through here. Now that I know that, I can just adjust. Oh, yep, the purple just finishes it off just right. I do cover it pretty good. That's just part of the fun. Like, I would love to, like, literally go get ice cream that looked like this. Some wild berry blizzard ice cream. Oh, my goodness. I bet that would be just amazing. All right. I think that's pretty salt, not salted, sugared. I think it's pretty sugared. So let's quit. And I'm just going to add on a little bit of iridescent glitter. This finishes it all off. So nice. Sometimes I use glitter so that people understand that things are not food because they often smell very food like. All right, I think that's good. Here we have Wildberry Blizzard soap, and I'll see you back here for the cut. All right, so I'm back to cut the Wildberry Blizzard soap, and I am just crazy pleased with how it turned out. I was a little bit worried because where the top was peeking through, like right here, I'm gonna hold it up to you right about in there, it looks gray. And I was really kind of sick to my stomach. Not really. I had a like pit in my stomach type feeling. I was just so worried about it. But it is looking spectacular. Now if I remember correctly, this always darkens more on the edges. And then actually stops. And it doesn't get too dark inside. But we'll have to see because I have the new fragrance in this one. It smells amazing it is so incredibly good so this is really fitting that blizzard look really well and i'm glad i went with the whole patchouli rain style on it and my patchouli rain is a mix of blues and kind of like a darker purple and white and it always looks so good but it thickens quite a bit and then I do the spoon swirl and that white always just sets it off perfect and it has done the same thing with this batch and I was looking back at some of my um, older soaps that I've done for Wildberry Blizzard I think I've only done it like two or three times but anyway looking back and they were kind of dull compared to this one and so I am just tickled. So this is driving me nuts because I want to go this way. So we're just going to go this way. And even though it's going to be backwards and my husband's going to say, is there something wrong? Why did you face these the other direction? Because that's like our little clue that something special needs to be paid attention to if we put them a different direction. But I'll just have to say, nope, was just messing with me. <laughs> I'll probably could put it over here on the other side, but that's okay. Maybe we'll just stack it right here as we go. Then I can move a little bit quicker and stack it more at the end. So I knew that these colors were going to dull out a little, so I did try to go more intense with them. I don't tend to use the full usage rates in a lot of my soaps. I mix up what I could use, and I rarely use all of it. Sometimes I do. But this one I just made the point of using it just so that we could have some nice bright colors and it worked out for this one for sure. That's almost like 
almost like a wave look in pretty colors. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. This really worked out nicely. I've been quite pleased with my soaps this year. One did not turn out at all, and that was Snow Kissed. And it is brown. It is brown, it's seized, and riced, and it was just a real pain to work with on its own. And so, I don't know, we may list those as ugly soaps just because they smell amazing. Absolutely amazing. In fact, I will just go get some. So this is kind of the darkest I've ever had a winter candy apple go. And I'm not really quite sure why it happened that way. I was trying to do some really bright, like a red and a pink, and then this was supposed to be gold. And yeah, I cleaned up this one bar just to see what it would look like. It smells amazing, but just ugly as heck. And it has a bunch of air pockets. These like that one has a little bit. So I won't be having any Snow Kiss soap except for this ugly. I do plan to have it in um, other products because it smells amazing. My new replacement is so much better smelling. It's amazing. It's just, it doesn't go super well in the cold process, but mixed with others, in this particular one, we did all right. This may continue to darken just a little bit. I'm looking at the edges. And like I said, I've had that happen with this particular blend before where the edges darken, but it doesn't really follow through inside the same. So we're just gonna have to see how this one plays out. But, oh, it smells so good. It is so amazing. So this one, Let's see, let's see. I think he just split the loaves last night. My husband just splits the loaves and cut, cuts a couple of loaves into bars for me and then puts them back on the shelf waiting for videos. So he did only split the loaves and cut these yesterday. So just have to see, but here's hoping that it turns out Super amazing because it smells. It's the best blend I've ever had on this one and Most of you know that's a pretty good blend anyway. All right, so here we have let's get a pretty one Here we have the wild berry blizzard soap for 2019 Okay, so let's go ahead and stack these together because that's just gonna look nice to go ahead and get them on their trays. I'll turn them back around to now. So I wanted to mention something and that is I'm not doing videos for all of my holiday soaps. So make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We have a couple of different ways you can be connected on Facebook. The problem is, is all the algorithms, you have to click to get notifications a lot of the time. The group stuff is really being hidden. So a lot of people aren't seeing my group stuff at all. I may even shut it down, I'm not sure. It's just almost pointless to be double posting in that one. That's such a cool bar. Um, you could also sign up for emails but I've also found out that MailChimp is scrubbing about a thousand of my contacts. They claim that they're not valid, but my husband's email is on there and we know it's valid. And we've had it for almost 20 years. It is super valid. And so we're really kind of discouraged about that. We just discovered that with our October release. And when we did some research, we found out that they do some of that if they think that something might get bounced or whatever. Basically, they want themselves looking good. So they will um, bounce e or not send emails if they think basically they're going to bounce back 
or go into a spam folder and they just don't want to be seen that way. So we're gonna have to come up with an alternative method. The email is important and it's a great way to stay in contact. I send these little newsletters with each release and it's just great. We just have to be able to stay in contact with you is all. All right, so here we have the Wildberry Blizzard looking amazing and I will see you for the next video. Talk to you later guys. Bye.